Hey everyone, welcome to this Force Friday. Today we're gonna to talk about the neck, the ever important neck. Why is it so important? Well, it's so important because it connects, connects, <laughs> it connects the head to the back, right? And there's an opportunity there uh, if we take it to create some really beautiful rhythmic moments and fluidity between those two structures or the opposite and really cause a lot of uh, stiffness and lack of fluidity between those two structures. So uh, what we are going to do today is try and help you understand how to keep fluidity running through the neck. Not only from a force standpoint, I'm hoping that we get to share with you some structural ideas about the neck. Uh, so we'll, all three of us, uh, Swanley, Matunji and I will be doodling our way through um, giving you our own personal thoughts and ideas on how to handle it. And we're gonna demo for you drawing from some model photos, uh, how all the stuff we're gonna talk about at the beginning uh, works. So we're gonna talk about anatomy, of course, today, uh, as you can see in the thumbnail. So as always, we have a lot of great content for you to cover and uh, yeah, it should be a good session. Um, okay, so let's get started. Before I do so, as always, let's say hi to the crew. Uh, how's it going, guys? How's it going, Swenley? Awesome. Ready to get rid of some stiff necks tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be chiropractors for the, uh, <laughs> for the uh, session. <laughs> Crack that neck. How's it going, Ritunjay? I've been doing good. Uh, I'm back you know, from last week. So. <laughs> yes. Welcome back. Your hair is also coming back quite well. <laughs> Mine got cut down and yours, we're almost about the same hair length now, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I finally couldn't take it anymore. Excuse me? We are kind of the same now on the hair. Yeah. Day. Yeah, exactly. And Swanley's always stays the same. I think Swanley gets a haircut like once a week. He's like a movie star. It just never changes. <laughs> and most of the time it's like every two weeks. Is it every two weeks? Really? Yeah. Wow. You are maniacal. Do you do it yourself? No, I don't know. I go to a friend. See, I told you. It's like a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> I go like every two to three months, which is why you see me go up and down these giant waves. So it's short and then it gets really long until I can't take it. And then cut it short really long. Up and down, up and down, you know. All right. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear any more about my haircut <laughs> process. <laughs> so let's get to it. Um, Here's the neck, right? We are here today to learn about the neck, head, and the body. Uh, the first thing I wanna state is the main muscle group that we're going to discuss today is called the sternocleidomastoid. And it's this muscle here that's on the side. I think you can hopefully see it in my, in my video feed, right? It's right here. And that muscle runs down from behind your ear all the way down to um, your clavicle and from your clavicle uh, down to your sternum, okay? And that's why it's called sternocleidomastoid. So sternum, ironically, it's attached to the manubrium, which is the top of the sternum, but this little bone here is actually called the manubrium. So sternocleido is the clavicle, and mastoid is the mastoid. What the heck is the mastoid? The mastoid is actually part of what's called like the temporal area here on the skull, it's just like bump that's sticking out. So the muscle comes up here and kind of hooks up along the top ridge of this, of this bump in the back of the skull, okay? So you have sternocleidomastoid, right? Here's a profile view of that. Um, and what you're seeing here is it goes and lifts up over that side. The sternocleidomastoid muscle is very um, ribbon-like. It's kind of a flat muscle that if you watch my camera feed here, you know, if you look at the side view here that we're seeing on this guy's neck, it's like this. And as it goes around the front of the neck, it turns. So it feels like it gets flat, you know, like this in the front, very thin. And it comes around like this. It's like this, right? So it's doing this kind of thing. It's coming from the side down to the front and it rotates, right? It rotates around the surface um, of the neck, right? So we want to be aware of that. As you can see here in the drawing, it's wide on the side, narrow on the front, right? Because of this ribbon-like rotation that it's going through. Now there's lots and lots and lots of other um, muscles of the neck. I'm gonna primarily focus on the sternocleido. Uh, the trapezius is pretty darn important. 
That muscle goes along the clavicle and the top of the scapula. It goes up the center of the spine and it goes to the base of the skull. Uh, so between the sternocleidomastoid muscles and the trapezius, you get quite a range of motion of like turning your head. And anytime we're in a talk here teaching you guys about anatomy, what you wanna be aware of is muscles contract over joints or from one bone to another, which is usually going over a joint. So here, actually the sternocleida is going over numerous ones, you could say, because the vertebrae are in between. There are many vertebrae, about seven to eight vertebrae between the base of the skull here and the clavicle. So it's going over all those joints of the spine between two harder muscle um, bones or two hard bones, meaning the skull, the base of the skull and the clavicle. And if it contracts, it's gonna pull down on that side, right? It's gonna pull your head down and to the right or down and to the left. And your trapezius on the other hand, which is in the back, if that shortens, you're gonna lift your chin up, right? So that muscle lifts your chin up back there. The traps do a lot more than that. They also help you shrug and so on. But anytime you're out there trying to learn anatomy and you look at a diagram, for instance, of an anatomy book, um, imagine what happens in the striations of those muscles for them to get shorter to bring bones closer together. That is the overall function of human anatomy, right? To be really simple about it. So there's, there's lots of other muscles in here. I, I teach surface or like gross anatomy, superficial anatomy. I don't work on or teach the musculature that goes underneath. We almost have like two to three, sometimes four layers of musculature. I don't talk about that because we don't see it. So chances are you're not gonna draw it, right? And I talk about all the surface stuff. So like I said, today, sternocleidomastoid, um, it's coming from the side down to the bottom. I want you to be aware of this rotational aspect of it. One of the main things we're looking for, especially in a side view, and this is extremely important, is we wanna get rhythm out of this. <coughs> Excuse me. So this, these blue arrows are our directional forces and orange is applied. Let's grab a different color here just that I can draw it with. Um, we want this to happen, right? I want this relationship to occur. So very often what I see happen with student work, you know, let's move this over here. The mistake I'll see happen is a student will draw the back and then they'll draw the neck like this and the collarbone and the chin, right? And you can see right away that breaks the tracks, right? Force, when it's rhythmic and it's doing something like this, it flows perfectly into the next place. The energy can move through here. It's like water rushing or like a toboggan, let's say. I don't know if you guys know what a toboggan is, but you know, it's like at the Olympics they have, it's like this fast sled in a trench, right? So you want a toboggan, you want to slide through this trench. This would be very bad, <laughs> right? This arrow of the toboggan is basically going head on into this wall and it would smash here. It has nowhere to go. It's not being redirected, right? So I wanna keep, you know, let's darken this up. I wanna darken up that green and subtly keep changing it. So here it's not good because I bounce off of it, right? If I make it straight, I'm still kind of bouncing off of it. If I start to curve it, I can kind of try to hook myself into this and if I could do like this and I get to here, you'll see the transition is not as perpendicular, right? It kind of starts lining up. In my mind, I just, here, let me go to my camera real quick. In my mind, I am very aware of this kind of stuff when I'm drawing force. It's like, how is one force coming into the next force? This is not good, this perpendicularity. This is better, this is better. It's gonna to get to a place where it goes like this. They almost line up. That is a very fast toboggan ride, right? Because there's no tension, there's no friction, there's no strong angle change. Now, drama gets created with strong angles, but if they're like this and it's dead on, it's not going anywhere, it's a dead halt. So you want it to just angle enough to get things to come from one curve and push it to another. Now I've been drawing angles. If I curve them, you know, now they kind of hook into one another. And that's what we're trying to do. And we're trying to have that happen throughout the body and the neck is no, um, is no different, right? Okay, so let's get back here. So that's one of the main things that we want to find. That is what we are going to try to, we are going to find today. And not only in the side view, 
Uh, but in the back view, the front view, and that's where a lot of the challenges I think occur because there's no real hard and fast rule outside of the fact that we want to try to get some rhythm between the torso and the neck and head happening. So to that point, another thing to keep in mind is we're dealing with two hard structures. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have the head and we have the torso or the rib cage in this case. Right, and then we've got this. So we have hard, hard and soft or flexible. Here, I'll put flex in here. Right, so you wanna be aware of this, this, and this. And the body, by the way, is built like this, right? If you think about the rib cage and then you go to the abdominal area, again, you have flex over here and then hard for the pelvis. So you got these hard masses and then softer masses, hard masses, softer masses, right, and so on. And there's usually some kind of bone running even through the length of the softer ones, like the thighs, for instance, or even the abs, right? You still have your spine running through there in the back, but that's where the flexibility is. So we're looking at today is this and trying to make sure that we keep things moving and alive. Now, one of the questions I get asked all the time is what happens when it's dead on, all right? Because as we know, force is more about asymmetry. So yeah. What happens? This happens, right? We have a shape and that shape is symmetrical. And for those of you that have been around with us for a little while now, you'll know that a symmetrical shape is a trap, right? There's nowhere to escape and force wants to escape. It wants to flow. It wants to always move, right? And continue from one place to another. And here it has nowhere to go. So yes, that can happen. Do I want it to happen? No, of course not. I don't want it to happen, but it can happen. If I had a dead on shot like this, sure, it can happen. So I usually try not to do that, if it's, especially if it's an illustration of my own. The only time I've had to do that again in my career is if you're doing like orthographic projections or something like that, where you're, the job is to do a dead on view, then yes, you would have this. My question is always, why do you want that? You know, if you're looking for drama, I would just slightly, you turn that neck five degrees and you have something totally different, right? So why bother having it head on? Um, here are two other views. And the point of these illustrations, and by the way, all these drawings that I'm showing you here, they're all from the anatomy book. And if you're interested in the anatomy book for your convenience, I put the link in the, um, in the description of today's video. Um, here, when the head turns to the left or turns to the right, Notice in the teal color here that we get a good forceful shape, right? We've got straight and we've got curve, right? We've got straight and we've got curve, right? So when we finally get to drawing all anatomy, any anatomy, what I and Swanley Matunje teach through mentorship is we want all of the musculature to have force. We want it to have form and structure and that it has good shape design, which is why I'm tinting this stuff in, I'm coloring in, because I'm trying to manage all three of those things. And that's tricky, and you can't really do that until um, you've gone through those three courses, right? So that's why, for those of you out there, and maybe you're new to force, you're here today, it's your first time, and you've taken a lot of anatomy classes, and you're like, I don't understand why my drawings aren't that good, or they don't have much life to them. That's because you've been focusing on these nouns, these objects, without knowing about force and how things move. Um, being able to structure general form before you do an anatomical form. And because lack of understanding shape design, right? I don't teach anatomy until our students get through all three of those courses. Then we go on to anatomy. So when we get here, you're already pretty darn good at force, form, and shape. Okay, I brought this in. This is from the book as well, because this is always a big question. I know this was a big question for me. I remember literally being in school and saying, you know, I would always go through subjects as I conquered one, I'd realize, ah, here's a problem spot for me. And that was the bottom of the jaw, All right? It's like, how do I draw this? So I just had to finally come up with my own structure and planes for it. And you can see here how I've built it out, right? Uh, you know, it's like the chin is here. I've got these angles, I've got the front, they flare out, you know, so you get to this kind of shape, basically. I want that center to come down. And I have almost a similar shape to the jaw here for the neck, slight flare out. But at least what it helps me understand here mentally is that I have a front, I have a side, right? And then I, I have like a small edged front to the um, sternocleidomastoid and the side again, right? 
this gets more specific, but again, these are general forms. I just, at least I have some sense of the blocking of that. So when I'm drawing it, I'm aware of the structure. Now, by the way, before we get into the details of the sternocleidomastoid, um, the form of the muscle can change based on how much somebody exercises the muscle, right? If you go to look at a bodybuilder, the sternocleido is gonna be like giant cables around the sides of their neck. And for the average human, um, they're, like I said, more of a ribbon and flat like muscle, but muscles can change, right? And morph based on how they're working, how, what their function is at the time and how much someone, you know, someone exercises that muscle or not. Okay. All right. I hope I hit a whole bunch of bases there for you guys. Again, text any questions if you have any, um, in the chat. So talking about basic structures, I grab this. I usually use this to teach how to draw hands. But I'm bringing it in here because I want you to see this is sort of, to me, this is a phase for artist learning. And that is to take something as complicated as the neck or the skull or the hand or foot and be able to break it down into its simpler planes and forms, right? So that's what you just saw in my drawing of the neck, right? These more simple planes and forms. Obviously, we're at force channel here. And that means we don't just want these to have planes and forms. We want them to be alive and to move and be rhythmic, right? So that's very important as well. Okay. Okay. I brought in some student work. Um, I've, taught an, an, uh, I've taught anatomy now for many years. And um, I taught it as a class. I might be doing that again in the fall or the spring of this upcoming year, by the way. Um, and these were drawings from the class. This is David Lamb. This is from years back. And uh, I just loved how he handled all this, you know, force, form, and shape. Look at all the surface line and structure. Look at all the dynamism that he got out of this and all the anatomy that he punched into the figure, right? And the next drawing, I think, is even more dynamic, right? Look at that. Like, just to, just to geek over this for a second, Man, look at all the form here that has force in it, right? Beautifully sculpted uh, legs and feet. And yet he's also shaping out all of the anatomy, right? And you can see these are notes from mine. I was talking about the quads and where the quads are and how things land on the body. And then we looked at it over the model, right? But superbly done. And, and what I love here, because um, sometimes like the conversation of style comes up, right? It's force. It's not exactly the way I do it. He's kind of taken it on in his own way and look what he did with it. I love how he worked black into white and white into black and went back and forth and back and forth between those two and got this extremely great sculptural forceful quality out of anatomy drawings that also have shape, right? So just superbly done, right? Okay, so no better way to learn than to watch me have to go through the process. So I figured each one of us, each of the instructors today would go through this with you guys. Let's start by really taking a look at the photograph, right? And really analyzing it. If you can't draw, if you can't see it, you can't draw it, right? So let's see if we can see what we're talking about. So the first thing I note when I look at this image is the model already has an excellent natural rhythm going on here, right? And that rhythm is like this. It's going like this. And you can see his neck and his head are going like this, right? So that's that's the first thing for you to learn to see is that you're not just looking at a guy with his arm raised up and his head looking to the right, right? And his other arm there tucked behind his face is that you see this, right? That you're one of the unique artists out there in this world that can look at a photograph like this and go, I see the rhythm, right? I see flow from the back. I see it going through that edge of the neck and into the face. And the face to me, by the way, is kind of like the last force. It's actually pushing out here like this, okay? That is step number one. If you haven't gotten there yet, this is the first thing you have to do. You have to be able to see beyond the details, beyond the light and shadow, beyond the form and rendering, beyond the anatomy, right? And see rhythm. I can see rhythm, okay? Now, when I go in here to start getting this anatomy in there, the um, sternocleidomastoid muscle tucks in behind the ear, okay? So somewhere back here, here this, this guy's name is Andy, an awesome model. Um, here's his ear, the edge of his ear. So back here 
is where the mastoid section of the skull is and where the muscle is working. Now, this kind of pose, I happen to love this kind of pose because he's turning a little bit. There's a lot of wrinkling of skin in the neck and actually helps show the crazy amount of rhythm. Right now, I said we go from here to here. To get into the neck, it's even stronger. It's actually this first red line right here, this force against this. That's how strong like the arc is in here, almost perpendicular, right? Like we were talking about before, right? Almost perpendicular. So we want this muscle to go from here. I'm gonna shape it out for you. It goes underneath the jaw here because his jaw is so strongly turned, right? Because remember his face is turning this way. So he's crunching this area in. Let's grab a green for that. So he's like squashing in the musculature there. So this comes in as a wrinkle of skin here. The muscle is here and it's gonna sweep down and it's gonna hook into his collarbone here. His collarbone's probably about right here and it makes its way all the way up to this right here. It's a lot of perspective going on here. The bone is actually like this and it's like this. And we can't see it until it shows up right here. So his muscle's going all the way down there, right? So. If I were to try to get here, let's get shape out of it. I'm gonna put in a color here so we can see a little bit more. But here, I'm gonna use yellow to shape it out. Okay. Then I'll use black to try to get some form out of it, right? So it's pretty round. I would say uh, it's like this. I'm just creating the form of it. It's gonna round out this way at the bottom, right? Because remember, it's like a ribbon. So it's flat on the side like this, and then it gets thin this way, right? So it's wide and then it gets narrow, right? Like that's what's happening because of that ribbon thing. So here's our first, here's our first drawing, right? How could I mess this up? There's lots of ways to mess it up. I could not know about the neck. Um, a, a very common, I'll give you another common mistake that happens here. Here, let me zoom out and I'm gonna push this over to the left now. So what could happen here is I'll see um, artists do this. They'll come up the back and see, God, it's, you can see I already set myself up. I was gonna wing it like right there, which is what it's doing. And again, just like straighten this out or the worst thing you can do, this is a very common mistake, is this and this, right? I call this the pimple, <laughs> right? This is the double concave and it's like the head wants to pop out of the neck like a pimple, right? Like it's being squeezed out both sides and it just like pops out the top. So don't do a pimple neck, <laughs> right? Um, so that you don't wanna do. What's always going on here is if you know what the force side is, which in this case, we're going from here like this, right? I can add the Adam's apple and all this other stuff in there. That's fine. You know, you can put that detail in here, but this curve in the front helps me shape out to the straight in the back, okay? And then his skull is like right here. So abstractly, I'm going from the back to the neck, right? I got this straight in the back. I got this muscle that's doing its thing here. I got his Adam apple here and I've got his jaw overlapping like this. So I can mess around with this shape if I want. What I really want out of this is this guy. You see, that's helping me hook up to behind the ear. You see, and I keep this straight here, keep that back of the neck like really strong to allow the flow to come from the back into the neck like so, you see? How are we doing in the forum there? Any uh, questions or comments? Anything that you guys have noticed? There are a lot of comments actually. Uh, let's see. I didn't see anything that stands out. The neck is this way. Here. Let's see, counter pasta. <laughs> is it fair <laughs> to say that the spine takes you from the back, pushes the neck forward into the front of the face and the sternomastoid brings you from the back of the skull to the front of the rib cage. Oh, that's interesting. I've never thought of it like that. If I were to draw what you just said, you could say this is going like this and getting you to the front of the face. And then this is doing this and bringing you to the front of the ribs. 
man, that's a crazy ride. Because I would say, do those two connect? Then that would lead me to, can I do this to this? <laughs> right? Like that, like this giant noose. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. It's a clever idea, I got to say. And functionally, what is happening is this is pulling to this. But the way I perceive it is I'm, I'm coming up the back and the neck is already a rhythm to this. To me, how can I explain this? Because it's going to sound like crazy talk, but I'll, I'll put it out there anyway. To me, this is almost like, um, this almost kind of is like radar, you know, or like a, a wave, like a sound wave, right? Like this pushes out here and in the face, it kind of pushes out too. It's like these last moments you know, this is the last one, the last, you know, the end of the line, I'll put end here. The end of the line is the face. And to me, they're almost doing the same thing. You'll notice that the neck and the face are generally going in the same direction in that sort of last hurrah. If we went the other way, um, Mr. Pasta, <laughs> um, I, I'd be like, man, how do I do that and pull this off? If I do this, I don't feel like I'm consciously connecting it to the, to the back. I would say try it out. I'm kind of curious to see what you come up with with that, but I've never thought of it like that. I've really always thought of it as I'm using the sternocleido to help me really create a relationship from the back and spine to the neck and head, you know, because there is that rhythm. It doesn't mean it's not doing what you're talking about because it is. It's pulling the skull to the, um, to the collarbone, but I feel like I'm almost strumming that guitar string as I go across it and get to the face, right? And it's helping me arc to the, to the head. Interesting. Do they all come together fluidly without overthinking or is it getting overwhelmed? LOL, I think while learning that is difficult, you need to build the confidence to think less. Yeah, I think that goes with anything. You need to build the confidence and the knowledge to have to think less about it. You need to think more about it to think less about it, most definitely. Uh, no force deals with how the, oh, okay, so is already responding. Maybe another pizza party, the way neck, the muscle on the spine curve into the back, the skull resembles the counterweight. Well, there'd be another pizza party. The way the neck muscles and the spine curve into the back of the skull resembles a counter wave or a flow. Yeah, so like I said, to me, it's almost like strumming across a string, you know, as I'm doing that. My only friend, the, end. <laughs> the neck is connected to the head. So I think it's important for the head and the neck to go in the same direction. Yes, it is. In general, like I said, it pretty much goes in the same direction. Okay, so that's how I would handle this one. I have one that's much more difficult, and that's this one. Let's take a look at this. So here's Marie, also an excellent model. Um, I'm like, what is going on here? First of all, she's got this giant ornate earring right over the darn muscle, <laughs> right? Doesn't make it any easier. So I have this obstacle. Um, the one thing I wanna show you, I don't have the rest of the photo in here, but one note I wanna share with you from the anatomy book. And man, I wish I could come up with an easier answer to this, but I've tried. And if I can get out of my own solution that I don't share it to you guys as a solution, because that means there's more than one. And originally I was doing the anatomy book and I was thinking about the front of the torso. Let's say this is a C torso, right? So it's like this. I thought, well, it seems like if I'm coming up this side, so this is now the front of the torso, right? Rib cage is here coming up the front of the torso, wouldn't it make sense to say the neck does this, right? It hooks up to the clavicle and to the manubrium here, right? And here's the head, right? Wouldn't that be great? It seems pretty easy because I can always tell you, go here, go to the opposite side. That's basically what we just did with the side view because it is pretty easy there, right? It goes from front to back. This is not always like this, which stinks, but it's not. You know, sometimes, we might have that same C torso and force will go this way like that. Then I was like, shoot, that doesn't work because now I'm here and then I just bounce off of this, right? There's no hookup, especially if this is the main direction. Sure, there'll be other stuff going on here I can hook up to, but that's the main direction. So the only thing I can share with you that is accurate is in the front view, force can happen from either side. It's either going to hook up to this side or it's gonna hook up to this side. Cause you still do have a little bit of force here, even in something like the C torso, 
So you might have force come from here, the weaker side, and hook up into the strong side of the neck, you see? That is very possible. They so wanna be aware of that, right? If you leave with anything today, be aware that you wanna to try to find a darn rhythm, <laughs> right? Figure out a way of rhythmically getting through the neck to connect the head and the rib cage. Don't just make a damn telephone pole or a pipe, right? And just stick the head on a pipe, right? You wanna to try to get some flow. These aren't like decapitated heads you know, a la the walking dead stuck on a spike, right? Like this is fluidity and connectivity and flow that we're trying to create here, okay? So to get back to, um, to Marie, um, what do I want here? So I have her head here, right? Here's her head, her perspective. I'm not gonna sit here and draw her facial features and all, but here's her head, okay? Just like that. And the big question marks, what's going on here? make this bigger. Um, okay, so when I look at her, I can see, believe it or not, I actually do very subtly see a sense of direction that looks like this, okay? That is important, man, to me, that's the gold, right? I'm like, ah, there is some fluidity. Now, lots of times when flow is here in the middle, there'll usually be a reverse at the very top and that's behind the ear. So her neck, I think her neck is doing this. The sternocleido is going like that. It's going like this. And last but not least, believe it or not, it has one more curve right down here, which is where it kind of like grappling hooks itself to the manubrium, right? So if I take away the yellow, you know, let's zoom in here, All right? Look really closely. I'll go back and forth and see if you can see what I see. Right, you can see that curve behind the earring up to her jaw. You can see the curve at the bottom of the tendon of the muscle grabbing onto the manubrium. And you can see there feels like there's a subtle flow up behind the back of her ear connecting to the skull, right? So that's important. The first step to learning how to draw force is to see force. Here it is, right? I'm showing you what I'm seeing, right? So that's how I would draw this. now. Let's get that into the drawing over here, all right? So let's see, her ear is like way up here, right? She has this, uh, her ears like that. Um, her jawline is here, it's very angled downward. Um, I want that muscle sitting up there. It's gonna go like this. I'm paying attention to the shape here, by the way, of the edge of the muscle to the corner of the jaw, that kind of helps me get the um, shaping right. And then I want to flow underneath the jaw down like this. It sweeps back pretty aggressively. And then finally, it's going to like grab on here like this. Now, one thing I didn't talk about before, let's talk about this now. So here's the hole, the notch of the collarbone, and then it sweeps up like this. So she's, here, let me move this over a little bit. I want to get this here more. So this hooks up. Now, what did I just do? I closed up the shape. I put more straightish ideas opposite the curves, okay? Like so, okay, so there. Now, what I didn't talk about before is the sternocleidomastoid muscle um, splits off at the bottom here. So one part, remember, goes to the manubrium, which is right here, okay? So it dips down into here, a little more like that. And then the muscle splits off here and there's a negative space triangle right there in black, okay? And it goes up like that. And I really wanna to try to make force shape out of all this. And so while I've been drawing, I'm trying to create forceful shape design because you can know what the muscle's doing. You can even get the flow and rhythm of it. But if you're gonna shape out the muscle, you can kill it by not knowing how to draw force shape, right? You don't want to fall into those three traps of the tube, double concave, double convex, right? So now we have this working for us. So now let's go to the other side, right? How am I doing on time? Okay, I got to end up here. On the other side, um, I want to hold on to that roundness, right? You can see in here that the muscle is going to wrap around and get back to this notch like so, and it's pretty flat because her muscles aren't super thick, right? 
So it's kind of like this, it's gonna thin out up there and there's gonna be this uh, negative space like triangle in here like this again, right? So it'll be like that. And you'll notice in here, remember the teal color that I had before. Uh, I'll grab this blue here. I've now created also a really nice forceful shape in the middle, right? It's, it's an S shape basically, right? So I went like this. I went from shape number one to shape number two, right? One to two. So that gives me a nice flow in the like trachea area of the neck and I'm getting flow out of here very closely turning tubish because it's so tight and small, right? But there she is, right? Now I can kill all of this as well. Even with all this work I got on the inside done, all I have to do to kill it is say, let me do this and let me do this, right? Then I did a double concave on the outside. That doesn't help me, right? So I think I'm gonna try, I would, here, let me push her chin out. So her chin's here. From a shape standpoint, let's knock this back. And I'm gonna to try to design the exterior, which by the way, I think you should always do first. I'm just getting in the anatomy weeds here. But the overall shape I would go for on this would be, um, I would curve the front. Uh, let's see, I would curve the front. All right, and that'll get me here into the trapezius and her shoulder. I would curve this front. And I would come down here. And then this is my straight. Right, and then this is fine that this curves and it goes a little concave, this section, but this is my straight, this is my curve. And that gives me um, the overall silhouette shape. You see, so I've got a good body or full neck shape for silhouette. And I broke that up with all this information um, on the inside, you see? So that's it, right? I shouldn't say it's it, There's a, that's a lot, right? It's a lot to keep track of all this stuff. Think about the sternocleidal mastoid muscle in the neck, find the different moments of fluidity, make sure the silhouette is always working as well, right? The full exterior silhouette. And then as you're drawing the shapes of the neck muscles, um, especially the sternocleido, that you keep that rhythm and fluidity going and trying to connect it to the torso. Do not, you know, again, before I leave here, do not do this, right? Don't draw necks like this very bad, and don't draw necks like this, very bad, right? Try to find that straight to curve silhouette and try to shove all that anatomy in there, make sure it's all working, okay? All right, guys, um, Mertunje is up next. You ready, Mertunje? Um, yes. All right, here we go. Let me give you uh, ultimate power. <laughs> uh, may co-host, I'll take care of Swenley while I'm here as well. Uh, okay, so you can see the screen. Yes. All right. Uh, so let's do some photographs. Like I'm just directly gonna jump into drawing, and uh, Mike like mostly covered all the anatomical details and uh, all the rhythmic details. So uh, I have simple like three photographs here. One is here. This one's pretty good, right? Uh, and one is here, like. He's like really pushing, like, whoa, you know, like <laughs> really pushing in the face there. So mm, let's start with a simple one. Okay. So uh, let's get the newsprint on. <laughs> I always have that. Mm, so um, just start with the fours, you know. Uh, what I usually like to start with is from the torso, okay, because like we are really connecting the body and the head, you know, through that uh, bridge basically of the neck. So what I, uh, obviously this is a full photograph. So I, was, I will do this and this, if that's like a full body. And then I'll start to think about the neck like this. Uh, but here, since, because we are just focusing on that part of the neck, I'll just do the simple shoulders here. Okay, like, like that. Like really, really simple shoulders. Um, now, uh, <laughs> see like what, what the person is doing, like uh, what the model is doing, Michael the model here. He's looking at the side, right? Basically, he's looking at the side and it activates his muscle, you know, uh, the sternocleidal mastoid muscle that you can see on the surface there. So it's like stretching, okay? So I'm gonna try to like push a little bit of, um, I'll try to like push it a little bit, okay? So let's do this, you know, and let's see how, how it works. So what I'm doing is I'm coming from this, okay? Um, his body basically, the his body basically is doing this in here, okay? Like that. 
and we're just like coming like this. So again, the rhythm that we're talking about, like the opposite rhythm. So from here uh, all the way to here, okay. Uh, so I'll start, uh, I'll try to do that in here. All right, so let's do this, like the shoulders. Uh, it gives me a first like starting point and I'm being really like soft and like being fluid here, okay. So we just got the, the basic connection, okay. I got the connection from the body, like the torso to the neck there. Now we know that this is the main sternocleidomastoid muscle that you're going for. And it is uh, attaching behind the ear, like the mastoid process. So I'm just gonna do like a really like quick um, face, you know, face there, so, you know, just like that. So doing this, right? Now we know that, oh, we're just connecting. I, I usually like <laughs> do this because we, we are being very, very fluid. So I just like do a really quick um, collarbones there, you know, just to have like a basic structure, have a basic structure in there. And uh, yeah, just just basically like do this stretching. I'm just like going for that stretch, you know, more than anything, I'm going for that stretch, like, whoa, you know, like <laughs> forward in the face there. So I'm just like trying to go for that forward, you know, motion there, you know, so something like this. And as you can see here, while we are getting that forward motion is like, you know, he's like doing this, you know, <laughs> that forward motion. All right. Um, I'm just started to do a little bit, hmm, I wouldn't say like details, but some, some landmarks in there, you know, something like that. If that helps, sometimes I do that, sometimes I'm not, because in males, mostly it's very protruding, right? Uh, like the Adam's apple here. So sometimes I do that, sometimes it's not. It looks, uh, it looks better, you know, just like, because here in the middle, that what Mike actually shows the shape in the middle there, and here's a sternocleidomastoid uh, surrounding it. So I just like to have uh, some kind of shape there to make that area busy. So sometimes I put like uh, Adam's apple in there. All right, um, so here, I'm just like getting the trapezius. Now trying to get the, trying to get a little bit structure in the collarbones here so we can make this muscle a little bit more specific, you know? That was just a flow that I did, uh, you know? It was just that forward motion, as I mentioned. But now we can start to have like a little bit of structure in the collarbones. And uh, yeah, try to make this muscle a little bit more specific to uh, its origins and the insertions. So I'm getting this, see? I'm still uh, sticking to that flow there, see? I'm still sticking to this, you know? Like coming out the torso, like going to neck. So I'm just like pushing into that space. Here's a mastoid, like behind your ear. You can put a little ear in here um, at the correct place, obviously. And then you get the mastoid at the back, see? Just right there. Uh, mastoid. Now, <laughs> sternocleidomastoid splits off, okay? So uh, let me do that here. So it splits off like that. Um, obviously there was a name comes from, it's connects to your sternum, okay? Like your maneuvering part. And it connects to your collarbone, which is like, it's splitting in the middle there. So I can get that splitting, you know, from this part here, okay? I think it's like a little bit darker, so I'm gonna just lighten it up. There's a little triangle that's happening like between that. So I wanna keep that, I don't wanna <laughs> hide that here. All right, so this is your connecting to the collarbone there, the maneuvering part, okay, some collar, uh, maneuvering part, here's your colloidal, which is clavicle. All right, getting that, I know this part here, this um, space in the middle between, you know, this is your trapezius, this is your sternocleidomastoid. So this part here has a bunch of muscles, okay? Um, levator scapulae and, you know, all those kind of muscles. I knew about that, but uh, never going into that, you know, anymore. So just some bunch of muscles in there. All right, so we got, we got to a point, you know, where it's becoming more and more complicated. So just uh, from the other side, I'll just like put like simple muscle, which is obviously the same muscles you are built uh, symmetrical from the front view. So, but again, still the story is not being gone there. So it's still following that, that lead, you know, coming from this to this, 
it's all activated basically so this is the traps okay just like that all right and here we go with a lot of like complicated like uh, it looks complicated but um, as you break it down just uh, get the flow there just get some uh, get some basic muscles which is sternocleidomastoid is the main one trapezius is the main one and uh, yeah just call it structure of the collarbone like makes it very very easy you know to draw the next step okay all right any questions at this oh okay mike is already answering that <laughs> yeah i'm writing away all right so we can jump on the next one just uh this is a quick uh yeah this this would be an interesting one so it's a little bit more complicated because the head is like tilting away like into the space and you can see the bottom of the jaw there uh, and whenever I'm drawing heads, perspective seems a big topic, okay? And here you can see how important that is. I'm gonna start with that, you know? I start with that. I know I should start from body there. You can, you know, obviously. But because the angle of the head is super like dynamic, you know, I would say, and it's like proceeding down into space, I would like have the head there, you know, first of all. So as you can see, like, um, and here, you know, the reason why I chose this photograph, look at this angle from here to here, right? It's basically very, very clear, you know, it's like almost like a box. And uh, because of the haircut that uh, that he has, <laughs> kind of like a crazy haircut, uh, it seems even more um, like clear, you know, the perspective there. So, all right. Now, the tricky part here is the bottom of the jaw there, okay? So, getting this. And this is the, the front of chin, basically, this, this plane change here, and getting this, all right? So that's the basic, um, yeah, that's the basic head, you know, perspective, I would say here. Now, getting here, like some landmarks, basically, this is like that. All right, now we can jump onto the, to the neck, basically, which is our main part. So coming down, again, sternocleidomastoid, <laughs> the bridge, just literally, um, Remember that's bridge from the bar, from the torso to the head, okay? So again, this forward push, forward push, forward push, okay? Just uh, getting that, getting the strong angle, uh, okay? From, and you can always like figure this angle out with clavicle because they're just like bike handles. If, even if you see the rhythms of a clavicle, it's like a bike handle, you know, basically <laughs> like that. So yeah, and crink crink, you know, like kind of, <laughs> A little psycho bicycle bell. Uh, anyway, so that's like a clavicle. So you can you can figure it out by here. Uh, getting the traps there again. Getting the two basic muscles, the sternocleidomastoid and the traps. Super important. Okay, like that. Another another clavicle. There. So this connects to the manubrium again, the sternum bone, sternal. <laughs> it's good that they, um, I wish they had keep their, all the names of the muscles, like depending on where the insert and the originates, uh, but they did a pretty good job on naming this muscle. So at least, at least we got one muscle, which has pretty good name. Yeah, so I agree. <laughs> one that's easier to remember. <laughs> Uh, all right, just getting some structures and yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, <laughs> getting that, getting the other straps. It's very like barely visible. So, all right, some forms in there, and there we go. You know, so <laughs> nothing, nothing too crazy about that. Uh, is there a specific any question that um, I should answer or? I think so. I think we're doing okay. Yeah. All right. How we're we doing on time. So. Yeah, I'd say we pass it on so we can give uh, Swanley 10 minutes. Looks good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed my part and let's hand it over to Swanley. So. Yes. Yes. Awesome. It's on Jay. Thank you. You have to give me power again, Mike. Yes, I do. I'm I'm granting right now. Here we go. <laughs> I grant thee the power. <laughs> awesome. All right. So yeah, Michael Mitunjay talked a lot about the uh, like the 
uh, flow and, uh, and, and anatomy, I think I will talk a bit about the structure, you know, like the simplified forms of the neck and how to connect it properly to the torso and the cranium. You know, that's something that students have been uh, challenged with a lot, I noticed. So the first thing that I see come up a lot, you know, when we talk about what Mike showed at the beginning from uh, about the uh, rhythm of, uh, or how force comes from the back, you know, and flows into the, uh, oh, this clip studio slowing down. Uh, yeah, there he is. So flow, force coming from the, like the upper back, you know, and then flow into the neck and then into the face. And what I see students like struggle with a lot is what I call the dragon ball neck. And why do I call it like that? Because it's <laughs> this right here. Nice. You know, I see this a lot, yeah. you know. And the problem with this is functionally, and I have to give them credit, like in Dragon Ball in the anime, they usually use the neck in a functional way. But the problem here is that if the neck is, let me grab red, if the neck is really working this way, you know, if the neck is bending this much, that means that this needs to continue in the head, you know, which means his face would have to be like this, you know? So if he was looking down like this, I would say, yeah, I totally agree. You know, perfect neck. But in this case, his face is doing this, you know, which means that the neck would have to be pushing that. Because again, the head, as Mike explained at the beginning, is a rigid bone structure, you know. So if it's going this way, the neck has to initiate that movement, you know. So the functional neck shape would be this, you know. Notice that this starts looking a bit more natural already, you know, because his face is pushing up, you know, so watch out for the Dragon Ball neck. You know, I see this a lot inside view. So students would draw like a figure, you know, let's say this, the rib cage like that. And then they would do this. You know, they would do something like this and somewhere here, they would add like the head shape like that, you know? And again, as we saw, this is not how a neck works. You know, if the neck is bending that much, like this only happens when you bring your chin towards the pit of the neck, you know, because then the head and neck would have to work like this, you know, for it to happen. So if you're bending your chin towards here, then yeah, then this uh, continuation of the curve of the spine like that, you know, so that's something to be aware of. All right, so let's do a quick drawing. Like I love this photo because it illustrates like the abstraction of rhythm and flow from the back into the neck and head. You know, so when I look at this photo, I see this you now. So we start with the torso, we have this, and this is a C torso. This is bending like this like the squashing part and I can see how force is coming from the back you know and this is pushing out so notice that I'm not starting to draw the shapes of the neck and head I first of all want this abstract flow you know from here to here I can see this this is pushing out you know so I keep going over this path you know to get this abstraction in place now I'm checking like where, like where is that chin pushing out? So I want like a simple rhythmic relationship. Now that is step number one. And once I have that, then this is my blueprint, you know? So now I can come back here and start building, you know? So let's say the face, the face is pushing out here. I can see the cranium right here. Now, and if you look at the skull, we would see that the cranium has a base right here. You know, right here you would have the jawline, the jaw is sticking out. And 
as we saw earlier, we have that neck muscle connecting from behind the ear towards the pit of the neck. Now you can see, if you look closely at the reference, you can see like the, the stretch of that muscle. Now it's creating like a clear curve like that. And in terms of simple structure, you know, if we really simplify this head from a side view, you know, so let's say this is the cranium. You now we have the jaw right here. You now this is the base of the cranium. And then the neck, you know, the neck is like this cylindrical form, you know, so you have the neck muscles that, uh, let me switch here. So you have the neck muscles that are coming here and attaching to the pit of the neck. You know, and if you look at the rib cage, this is at an angle. And then you have the simple form of the neck. You know, so this would be pushing out as we saw earlier. So this is attaching right here at the base of the cranium, which is around the base of the nose, approximately. You know, so that's a good guideline to keep in mind. You, know, the, you would have the eye line halfway the head, you would have the ear right here. You know, and most of the time, like the cranium is sticking out a bit at the back. You know, it's more like this rounded shape. And then you have the form underneath the jaw and the Adam's apple near the front, you know? So like this simple structure is super important to keep in mind to connect the uh, neck to the head, you know? So in this case, we have this curve already in place. So I want to construct this, uh, like the simple cylinder, you know? And this is like attaching right here. So if you look at the, like the upper torso, you now let's say this is like the, the upper torso, this would be the rib cage in here. And you would see like this triangular sockets for the neck at the top of the torso, you know, triangular because of course it's narrower here, the pit of the neck. You know, and this is a bit rounder. Usually I start with a triangle and then I round it off, you know, and you have the next cylinder like sitting right here. You know, this would be where it attaches to the cranium. And then you have the clavicles, like two bicycle handles, like Mitunje showed earlier. You know, they wrap around that roundness of the neck on both sides. You know, then you have the trapezius coming from behind and literally wraps around that cylinder like usually you can see like this empty space you know in between like the volume of the neck and this edge of the trapezium so yeah this this simple structure is important to keep in mind you know so we have that and then we can add the rest to it you know this would go like this and sit in front close the pit of the neck you know, so notice the first thing is the forces and how they create rhythm. And then once you have like that abstract flow, then you start adding simple structure to it. You now you add simple structure and I'm keeping the shapes of the forms like forceful. Notice that this is all for shape, you know, straight to curve design. And this gives you a good basis to build on you know, once you have that in place, you can start adding like the smaller forms, like the hair, for example, you know, but the most important thing that keeps the, like the drawing alive and fluid is this abstract relationship, you know? And before we end, let's do another very quick one. So let's see if I can show like the other, action of the neck. So let's zoom in a little bit. You know, so this is a good example of what I was showing at the beginning. You know, so you would have the torso. That's the upper torso. This looks like an S-curve. It's going like this. You now we have upper torso. This would be like the top plane. This is the center right here. Close down and notice that 
ear, her neck. Right? She's bending her chin, bringing her chin towards the pit of the neck, right? So here she's doing this, you know, I have to do this to get that action to happen in this case. You know, so here this triangle would be like the force would be working this way. Now again, notice that the arrow is directing the action, it's directional force. You know, and then this would be like the front plane of the face. You know, we would see the top of the head right here. You know, and structure-wise, it's the same. Like now we have the action. Now we want to be aware of the structure, you know. So this would be the jawline. You know, you have this triangle underneath the jaw and notice the like the roundness of that neck volume you know you have the socket right here and you have this tapered cylinder fitting underneath the like the base of the cranium here at the back you know so that's something important to keep in mind once you have the forces you want to uh like add form you know, that's, that's bending based on those forces, you know. So the cylinder would look like this, you know, this like the triangle created by the muscles and the cylinder of the neck would be bending, you know, with those forces to give us forceful form. All right, I see it's time. So hopefully this helped you guys, you know, to combine uh, force and structure together to uh, draw the head and neck. Awesome. Thank you so much, Swinley. Yeah, All right, right, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so a lot of great questions out there. I did my best to try to field as much as I could. Um, uh, just to reiterate some of those that were asked, uh, there was quite a few questions around order. Um, torso before neck and head. I know there's a lot of uh, teaching or approaches out there starting at the head. I was taught like that for a while my, myself, even in art school. Uh, and I would say, you know, over the last 25 years of teaching force, I've made it more about the torso first. The torso is the trunk of the tree. It's not like I would draw a leaf on the tree before I drew the trunk, right? The trunk will end up helping lead you down a branch over to the leaf, which could be the head or the nose or the eyes and so on. Someday when you're really awesome at it, you can start with that leaf and work your way all the way back down to the trunk because that leaf is just so darn awesome, right? So you want to start there and work your way backwards, that's fine. But in the beginning, if you're learning, I highly recommend you start with the trunk of the tree, right? Uh, what were some of the other ones? Um, somebody, I think it was JP Parker kind of put it very succinctly today. Yes, uh, force is the rhythmic blueprint of the body. That's why it's so darn important, right? Like, how do you not start there, right? Once you get that rhythmic blueprint down, you can attach the structures to the blueprint. And those structures, someone else was asking, Potato Knot was asking about, um, are not form and shape the same thing? They are and they're not. They're not. Contextually, form is structure. Shape is uh, shape, like a circle compared to a sphere, right? The shape of the sphere is a circle. I need the sphere to get to the circle. Could I draw just a circle? Sure, and it would be two dimensional and stand on its own. Could I cut a circle out of a flat piece of paper? Sure, I could do that, it would stand on its own. But the world we live in is three dimensional, right? So when I teach form and shape, I try to have students understand a form creates a shape, not the other way around. So you really need to understand structure and structure creates silhouettes, right? So they need each other, they make each other, they're one in the same. If you have a form, you have a shape automatically. And if you have a shape and it's three dimensional, it has form inside of it, right? So th that's the challenge in teaching it is, we try to do one before the other. We usually teach form before shape. So you understand it is structure that creates shape, not the other way around, but they live synergistically, right? Uh, and I think that's it. Um, great questions today. Uh, Please, someone was mentioning out there and I said, it'd be great to have you know, more people come in. Most definitely, please spread the word that we're here and we're teaching every Friday and we're putting out the best content that we can for you guys. 
I'd love to, um, you know, stretch out our audience and get more people showing up. Um, that'd be great, you know? Uh, and that's it. Otherwise, we will see you guys next Friday. And if you have any suggestions, always feel free to email me at mike at drawingforce.com. I check my email every day. Uh, if you're like, man, I would really love for you to do, um, you know, this particular subject. We're always looking for new ideas. We still have a ton of content to go through. We probably have at least next couple of years worth of work that we keep working on here with you guys. But if there's something that really um, is interesting to you, always feel free to you know send it across our desks. I'm more than happy to look at it. So have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, Swami and Matunje, as always, for your um, additional insight on the subjects of drawing force. And uh, we will all see you next Friday. Take care. Have a great week, everyone. See you guys. Bye-bye.